Ladies and gents, welcome back to WCS Europe Premier League round of 16 in Group C. Game one is already in the history books, and in the end, it went the way we thought it would go. Let's take a look at the brackets just to confirm for you if you missed it. 4GG going through 2 1 against Showtime. The local hero does get another shot, though, in the second match. He will play the loser of our next game which is going to be very interesting. Let's take a look at the matchup between the two players that are about to play. And interesting for a number of different reasons. We'll talk to Kolaris in a little bit as to why it's genius from Korea going up against Poland's favorite son, or at least their favorite Zerg, Nurcio. Kolaris, uh, interesting matchup for a number of reasons. We said earlier on when we were talking to Grubby, genius, the man who hasn't played in many tournaments this year. He's on his third tournament. The second one was actually challenge only. He did round of 48 in that one, so that was awful. Uh, and now suddenly finds himself at the round of 16, his best result of the year by far, and actually his best result for quite a while. He's the 2010 BlizzCon champion. That seems an awful long time ago since we saw anything great from him. Head to head with a man who did very well in 2012. Two major titles to his name. One of the strongest foreigners we saw last year. Hasn't quite shown us what he can do, but he's been very consistent, consistently making round of 16. So I guess my question to you is, is it better to know or to be unknown? Well, uh, in this case, if you were to consider a genius and unknown, uh, as he hasn't really been doing too much lately, it, I would say it's probably better to be in genius's shoes. Uh, reason being is because when he was playing in 2010 uh, and then into 2011, 2012, there were a lot of Code S runs there. And I mean a lot, up until the point where he was second in that Code S and we saw one of the most fun GSL finals of all time with Don Regu teasing him and poking him all the time and then genius was poking him and that was, that was good fun. Um, but the thing is for genius is that every struggle that he's had in these tournaments, because he's not done anything else this year other than WCS alone, and it's, a lot of it's been online. That's been the struggle for him. But now in an offline setting, Genius is a very, very strong opponent. But likewise, Nurcio, he's back on form. He's back on form. His results uh, of the past 2013 haven't really preceded his reputation from Wings of Liberty. Um, and in this matchup in general, five wins and 12 losses across the entirety of the WCS system, but a, some, a lot of those wins are as of late. Uh, so the back on form, Nurcio is here, and he's looking to win. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely is. He seems very committed, very focused. Um, do you think the fact that neither of these two players right now are even anywhere remotely close to the top 16 going to BlizzCon is an advantage for them because they can just focus on WCS Europe and not have to worry about these points, these uh, horrible points like 4GG, very aware that he has to win every match, MC, very aware he has to win every match. These two, it's a real massive outside possibility for them to make it to BlizzCon. So is that easier for them just to focus on the matches and focus on this group? I would say it's a little bit of a relaxing factor, but not in the grand scheme of things, I want to say. Because, you know, it's, it's a tournament like any other tournament. Uh, Genius has been in this situation many, many a times, having runs through Code S. Uh, so he's been in the situation where you're preparing for, you know, a specific group on a specific day a lot. So maybe Genius does have a bit more of comfort in that regard. Uh, but still, Nurcio's no slouch when it comes to offline tournaments as well. So I think both of them are just going to come in, you know, confident in their player styles and just getting on with it. All right. Thank you very much, Kalaris. Time now to go over to our second game here in Group C. It's time to find out whether MC's prophetic words are prophetic or not. Does he have brain or game? It's time for game number two. It's Genius versus Nurcio with your commentators, Apollo and Grubby. Happy faces, everybody, and welcome to the commentary desk. How are you doing, Grubby? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed the first series of the day, and let's hope that this second one can bring as much joy. Yeah, MC is saying uh, Genius doesn't have brains, but I'll have you know, I detected some brain activity in there. How did you test for that? Hmm, well, he was moving around and stuff. Oh, he must have brains then, yeah. surely. He was All looking right. at the game and I actually saw a glint of interest, or more than that. More than that. Yeah, no, Maybe he was, it was the eye of the tiger. He was studying for GG Showtime. Really? Yeah. Well, he's uh, going to have to be 
on point here if he wants to beat Nuccio. He's been performing rather well recently. Uh, coming into this, though, I think one thing to think about with Genius, or not to think about, you may say, mm -hmm. is that we have no idea what he's really going to do today. Then let's not think about it. Then let's <laughs> not think about it and just move on. We'll think about it later. Very surprising uh, map removal there by Nurcho. Or not. Akalon Waste, the most removed map for Zerg this tournament so far, because all the other maps are so good. Uh, Derelict Watcher, uh, removed by Genius. Mm -hmm. Very open spaces. Can be difficult to protect the third base. And Yonsu is removed. Now, this is also a good choice. There's a lot of very tight spaces there for, uh, for Protoss to use force fields with. So it can be difficult to play an aggressive game there. And uh, yeah, that's an understandable choice. Maybe we'll see Frost or Polar Knight removed. Oh, Whirlwind. Whirlwind being removed by, uh, by Genius, being the first Korean so far who leaves both Frost and Polar Knight open. We've seen them being double removed by a lot of the Koreans thus far. We're going to see a proxy Void Ray from Genius. <laughs> oh, that is not completely outside of the <laughs> possibilities, <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. Belcher, Vestage, Frost and Polar Knight. Until we see the map order, we uh, can't say much more about that. Well, there he is for now while we wait for this map order. Genius. Not, well, currently playing for, for no team at the moment. Isn't he? Left the Zubu not too long ago. Okay. And uh, he travelled here, by the way, in his own dime. Did he? Paid for his own way to get here. Was Confident very happy chap. with a round of 32 finish and did pay his own way. There's been a couple of people done that. I think Duck Duck did last season as well, paid his own way. MVP's paid his own way every time so far as well. And it was worth it for those two guys. But is it going to be worth it for this guy? It'll be partly up to Nurcio. Partly up to Nurcio. Yeah. And then someone else as well. Yeah. Well, here are the map orders. Uh, well, the map order here, Grubby. It's Frost, Belshire, and then Polar Knight. Okay, so Nurcio picked Frost, which is a really big map, and gives Zerg to play a more reactive style. Gives Zerg a chance to play a more reactive style. Belshire Vestige for uh, Genius. It is an aggressive map. It's a map that favors aggressive positioning, mm -hmm. but there aren't too many bases. So he might feel like he has more control over the game against Nurcho, who is a cat with a lot of tricks. Likes going for Mutalis, hidden bases, but also sometimes aggression. Though recently he hasn't been quite as aggressive mm. or cheesy. Uh, okay, so here's Genius, by the way. Let me just go over those 100% win records for you, because yeah. at first glimpse it looks like this guy's unbeatable. <laughs> um, but he's only played a very few selected games. Okay, small He's sample size. He's obviously very, very small sample size, as in Challenger League and Premier League. So not too many games to go by. So uh, don't look at those two stats closely. But he is, as you can see, the first ever BlizzCon StarCraft II champion. He's one of the most experienced StarCraft II players to date because he has been here since the beginning of time. And he's got a lot of experience when it comes to playing in this environment. He was a very consistent Codes Protoss in 2011. He made it to the finals in 2012. So if you've been following StarCraft for a long time, you will know who he is. And if you don't, well, welcome. And here is Genius. Yeah. But here's his opponent, Grubby. And you know this guy very well. Yeah, uh, apparently Nurture and I meet sometimes in tournaments. Uh, yeah, there was this semi-rivalry where you had trouble defeating him, but that was dethroned eventually. I don't know, because, like... Overall, he's like a lot better than me, he has more prize money and everything, but when we meet, sometimes I win. And to uh, my surprise and his anger sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Low win rate against Protoss in WCS mm. events, because this is just WCS events. That's he right. has gotten a home story cup victory off the back of, uh, in large part, also his incredibly strong ZVP. And you, you played a lot of him when it came to Wings of Liberty, let's say. Not so much in Heart of the Swarm, but in Wings of Liberty, you played a lot against him. And he really did have a good understanding of that matchup back yeah. then. And he seems to have really started to regain it with the amount of tech switches, the amount of units and the aggression he plays. He is starting to really perform, as Kolaris has said. His most recent wins are really in recent times, not over a long time ago. Yeah, and also uh, something to say about his style. It is, uh, he's actually very good defensively. He's good against um, early gate attacks, he's good against all-ins. And one of the things he does differently from most Zergs... Okay, let's say there's several basic skills, like mm -hmm. spreading your army, droning the correct amount, not too much, not too few, and uh, also uh, making the correct type of army, the micro and everything. Basic skills. But one thing he does a little bit differently, as soon as he sees there's an attack coming, he'll uh, throw up two spine crawlers. 
and sometimes he'll throw up two spine crawlers in each of his exposed bases. And uh, he uses them very actively. If he sees that the attack is going somewhere else, he uproots them and burrows mm. them during the fight at the fight where it's happening. And how can we forget? How could we ever forget the trick that he did to shut out the DTs from killing his hatchery? Was it Yongwa? Home Story Cup victory against Yongwa, Ohana. Hatchery was going down and somehow he found a way to bug out yeah. the DTs and push them away from the hatch. He's uh, got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Good Let's micro. see if we can see them today, because I think that guy on screen has a couple as well. And we are now ready to begin map number one, series number two of the day between Genius and Nurcio. And well, let's load in to this next map. There's down here to the bottom left-hand side, spawning as the red Protoss. It's Genius. And then a player that moved on into the round of 16 on this map. There's the blue Zerg up here to the top left. It's Nurcio. And just remembering back to that game uh, against Hazuobs in the round of 32, a very economy aggressive style. Lots of Mulus, lots of expansions. Took the entire of the map, was mining a lot of money, and was hammering down on an air strategy, Mutilus and Corruptors, and that could be something we see today from him. Yeah, and it's difficult to get a fourth base uh, when the Zerg is playing like that, so the approach that a Protoss should take is probably going to be more two or three base style, because mm. if you're going up against Zerg and they have Mutilus and a lot of bases and you've got four base, there's a very big surface area to defend uh, against Zerglings, and Luckily, we've got just the man for the job. Genius, he does like exploiting timings to uh, defeat his opponent before they get into mm. an incredibly big comfort zone. Well, he has opted to go for the gateway expand here, taking the second gas rather early on. And everybody really looking at Genius today is not sure what to expect from him, but that's yeah. his opening build here. So with double gas opening, it can go in a few different ways. It can be completely standard and be mm -hmm. gateway pressure. And you can do that with one or with two gases, but when you get two gas, it's a little bit uh, more stable, you have a bit more gas, you have a bit more future. But uh, he can also say, getting more gas because he wants to come with a quick Stargate after the Nexus, or a quick Twilight Counter for DTs. Well, Nurcio's going to poke in here. He's actually sent this overlord directly south, is going to see the Nexus. Decides to return back, though, without really scouting too much here. Sees an assimilator that hasn't even been mined from yet. So if Nurcio's, you know, putting stuff together here and not seeing the Nexus down either, at this point you're, you're looking at it and saying, well, surely that must be a second gas from Genius at this point. He isn't going to really be like, <laughs> well, that's the first gas that he hasn't mined from yet and there's still no Nexus down. That's like mind gaming your opponent and yourself at the same time. Yeah, I've seen Genius do this in practice just now too. He, mm -hmm. he gets two gas, puts three in one and, and zero in the other. And it's actually less effective when you do it that way. It's better when you do one in one and two in the other. But this is how he does it. Old habits sometimes die hard, apparently. Nexus going down at a pretty normal time. Pylon coming there and the wall off will soon be completed mm. with uh, probably a gate and another gate, or a gate and a forge, or a gate and a stargate. We'll have to wait and see. All right, well, Nurcio has decided to throw down that very early third hatchery here. He hasn't opted to take an extractor to start to mine the gas ready for his defense, whether it be speed or roaches, or obviously what he chooses to play with here. But he has got the two Zerglings. Bear in mind at this point, Grubby, Genius has got no information at all. He has not scouted. Um, he doesn't. He knows where his opponent is due to the overlord position. But he's playing just a very strict, this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to play it out. What do you think about that? Well, I think that he's got a plan. You play this style and you already know exactly what you're going to do. You say to yourself, I don't care what he's doing at this point. I'm going to nail it down. I'm going to execute it. So does that now mean that he's going to play generic or is it some form of all-in style would you say it's hard to say i mean I, I think probably generic and he just wants the build to be as streamlined as possible mm. indeed if you say whatever i see i'm not going to change what i'm going to do why sacrifice the lost mining time by sending a probe around and then furthermore it's such a big map that uh if you send the probe in the wrong direction you may not get confirmation about what your opponent's doing anyway until it's already too late to make the vital mm. decisions and lastly, the overlords tell him where Zerk is. 
Okay, so, well, I've got a question for you. Um, Genius knows where Nurture is via the Overlord. Mm. He's decided to send a probe to the bottom right. Okay, so maybe he doesn't know for sure. <laughs> but surely wouldn't you have thought that the, the Overlord arriving so early would give you the indication? Yeah, you, you might think so, but let's okay. say there's like a tiny chance you're wrong or something, or he didn't study it. It depends if you really mm. studied the timing of the Overlords uh, flying around. Well, for now, the genius knows, right? Because he's seeing the creep. He's going to go over it's to the strong fourth indicator. Case proper. It's a pretty strong indicator. What's that probe going to do on the right-hand side now? Does that now go up, build a pylon that is not going to be scouted very early on? Is it going to be a, a reinforcement point for some zealots to come in? Yeah, it, I think so. Is it not too late? It's a little bit late, yeah. Uh, oftentimes you see Warpin starting at uh, at 6 minutes or so. Yeah. And it's 7.20, it hasn't even started the pylon yet. He has one Phoenix, which is clearing up Overlords. This is very interesting. Three extra gateways for a grand mm. total of six. So what do most Zergs do when you start Phoenix production, Apollo? Well, they're going to drone and get a couple of spore crawlers and just fast forward to a later stage of the game. And uh, what would be really good against that? Some form of attack, Grubby. Yeah, and uh, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. I don't see any probes being produced right now. Genius looking to attack very early. And now, interestingly, Nurcho, he went for a build that is the usual counter to someone who goes Forge Fast Expand. Mm -hmm. He went quick four hatch, no speed, no gas. His speed links are only just beginning. I see an absolute absence of a Roach Warren. <laughs> Now, this is a little bit suspicious. I think from now on, if Nurture makes another drone, it'll be yeah, very surprising. Both Rorian has started now. Four Zerglings, Spine and Spore. The probe that went around the other side of the map has built a pylon. Oh. And Nurture is kind of spotting this out. It's very cool. He, ha he doesn't know what's going on yet because he's making another Spore. He already has two and he's making another yeah. because he thinks this is going to be a Void Rail in. I've already confirmed the Stargate because of the Phoenix. Well, Probably three voices. He so he's a little bit in the dark at this moment, but surprise! Hello, I'm on to creep, and here's my units, and I'm ready to kill you now. But is Nurcio ready? He's got a spine crawler building. He's got another one moving down here, as you described very vividly earlier on. But the army supply is 46 to 21. A couple of force wheels, lot the drones out, and genius with a flick of a switch says, "Hello, Nurcio. Actually, goodbye, Nurcio." Yeah, I mean, Tunneling Claws is coming. Why? There's no Burrow. There we go, Burrow. Okay. Tunneling Claws and Burrow is what Nurture will hope to win with from two bases. This base is gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone and uh, not coming back anytime soon here. His genius does march on. There's still quite a few units out for, uh, for Nurture, but does he have what it takes to be able to stop six gateways? He hasn't lost any units yet either. Force field's so. still available. It's going to look very hard for him. Here go a number of roaches that he really can't afford to miss. Very um, nice force fields. Well, the force fields are uh, just locking those roaches out. They are gone already. There are still force fields left from this point. Genius can warp in some more units. He comes to a very nice position. Great time warp. Great extra two force fields there. Extra third one, which traps all those roaches. Zerkers do break their way through here, but it's already over. GG and Genius will take map number one. Surprising Nurcio. He was not expecting that at all. That was such a smart build from Genius. A little bit of a smirk there. You think that was reactionary? No, I think... To do that, or it was just like, as we described, not scout, yeah. this is it? It was absolutely not reactionary. And if you try to make a build like that reactionary, it's not going to be nearly as potent mm. as it was in the way that we saw it. Because re reactionarily, there would have been a second Phoenix, a third, and he yeah. would have to like, oh, okay, now I'm going to stop Phoenixes. Maybe I don't mind for my third, fourth gas. This was completely planned. Mm. And Nurjo fell for it. It was like, uh, how do you say, real in, sucker, and something. Like caught on the hook saying. and you got reeled yeah. in. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know Nurcio. You, you've played against him a lot in tournaments. You know his mindset. I've seen you select strategies map to map to map, maybe sometimes based on what he's thinking. What do you think that could be going through his head now? He's just had a bit of a taste of what, you know, genius is and how he's playing. Coming into Belshire Vestige, what's the first thing now you think that? Nurcho is going to be thinking about. I think Nurcho now understands that Genius has approached Nurcho knowing he's playing Nurcho. He's not approaching this knowing he's playing a Zerg. And that's a very significant difference mm -hmm. because every match, every match a programmer plays, they've got a question. Am I going to play my opponent or am I going to play the opponent's race? Guaranteed. Every player always has this question. And Genius said, I'm playing Nurcho. Nurcho said, I'm playing Protoss. And now I think Nurcho is going to make an adjustment. All right, well, let's find out what that adjustment is going to be. We are now ready for map number two. 
between these two players. Currently, Genius has a lead. Can Nurcio pull it back here to go to game number three? And we're about to find out here, as we are now ready to load in to Bell Shear Vestige. And down here, the first player to gain an introduction, spawning as the Red Protoss, it's Genius. And then second in line for the introduction, up here there's the blue Zerg player. To the top left, it's Nurcio. And Nurcio was, uh, I was talking to him a little bit before, and uh, I said, you know, are you, are you excited? Are you ready for today? Um, and he's like, well, yeah, I don't really care. And I go, don't you say that. Don't you say that. <laughs> I know every... Why do you play this game? He goes, to compete. And I go, what, do you like to lose then when you compete? And he looks at me with a blank face. I'm like, of course you care. <laughs> of course you do. Don't try to give me that. Yeah. If you don't care and if there's no motivation, then you literally wouldn't come here. You literally wouldn't play. There's Look something you care about. The, the reason may yeah. differ, but there's some, some reason you care. Look at the overlords, by the way. What happens, Grubby, if he was getting cannon rush right now? What would happen? You mean like... Uh, a one base counter rush against a one base Zerg? Yeah, I mean, well... I don't know, I would have to ask Golsey. <laughs> <laughs> but it is going to be a Nexus first he, here. He's not going hatchery first, right? So it's kind of okay. Yeah. I mean, but he wouldn't have had any idea about it, right? I mean, he hasn't looked around... Yeah, yeah it's true. The SOS-style cannon rush that we saw so mm. much in Season 1 of WCS, over there, right over there, behind that gas, would work pretty well. Now, because he didn't go hatch first, he's not as invested in it as uh, as he normally would be, mm. so um, he wouldn't be he wouldn't have lost by default, but it might be very uncomfortable. All right, well, this is uh, as described before. Nexus first, right behind it, the forge inside the main base is hidden away uh, from Nurcio's initial set of overlords, which are on the left hand side, and and the gateway does begin here on the natural as well as the cannon. So Nurcio is going to know exactly the the build setup that Genius does have. Yeah. Nurcho is just going to go for his third hatchery. He knows he's under no threat at all. If he's going to do it versus Gateway Expand, he's going to be doing it yeah. here as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, building the, the forge in the main base like this is uh, kind of what Yongwa and Parting were doing in Wings of Liberty. Mm -hmm. The added benefit is that your first pylon doesn't cost you as much resource loss because the probe can just uh, mm -hmm. go straight back to mining. And secondly, your forge isn't fragile to roach pushes. And Nurcho, when he makes some roaches and links, he loves to go for the forge, cancel the progress on that attack upgrade. Yeah. So, and it's like it's a bit more risky against certain kinds of builds. But Nurcho has been a really good boy. He hasn't been cheesing that much, not nearly as much as he used to. So <laughs> it was a, a safe gamble for for Genius. And now he has the ultimate economy that a Protoss could ever possibly have, while still getting a, a Cybercore. <laughs> uh, a couple of questions here again here, Grubby. Uh, I do like to. to to get your brain working and get it ticking. Um, first of all, uh, Zerg here, um, a couple of advantages. Uh, I'd say number one is that they do have the overlord to look on the gases on the natural and players can make predictions on what you're doing. But usually, as a Zerg player, you'd have the second overlord, which should be floating outside the main base of the Protoss to, to help you fill the information gaps of what the Protoss is doing. But Nurture, with his second overlord, decided to scout the third to see if there was an early Nexus come down, which is what it's hovering around there for. Could this not hurt him, potentially, depending on what we see thrown down and where? Potentially it could. Uh, and, and also, yeah, normally you would like to have the Overlord get into the main base at around seven minutes to detect what tech process is going. Uh, overlords, they're pretty slow. I don't think he can make it in a minute. No, he's not going to make it. They'll be like watching two snails race and uh, <laughs> hope that they'll be done by today. Um, and genius. So he's going to have a lot. I mean, one of the weaknesses of going for the robotics facility, which we've seen, is it being spotted early? Because then the Zerg player is like, all right, time to build up my economy real fast here, get ready, and get my, my, my Roach Roar, my Zerg, my Creep Spread, my Overlords going, and then deal with what's coming. But because of the awful position here, he simply isn't going to see it. This could be a Stargate. It could be, yeah. it could be anything at this point. Yeah. Now, I do have to mention that this is looking like an Immortal All In. Mm. Um, he doesn't have quite enough resources right now to make an Immortal, which is a little funny. But this looks like... A, oh, no, it's not an Immortal then. Oh, okay. I think this is going to be the build that... Um, let me think for a second. Was it Maxed or, or Jim? No, it was Oz. Oz against <laughs> Scarlet in WCS America. Yeah. He did... Uh, it was also on this map. 
Uh, this is so far the ultimate economical opening. Uh, you get a war prism, you get seven gates, plus one. You load in whatever units you have in the prism, you fly across, warp in seven zealots, then seven more. Or like seven sentries first and then seven more, and then you go. Actually, that's not what it is. This is a war prism harass, distracting, and then into an immortal all in. And I think Nurcho, he has played against this before, but the question is, how long ago was it? And also, he's got no information on the left-hand side, or no units that can gather the warp prism moving out at this moment. So he's completely blind to what's about to happen. Yeah. And with the gateways down, you know, it's not a massive amount of gateways, but to be honest, this is still going to do a lot. He's, he's got no idea. Yeah, he's playing very blind. You're right, John. You've been trying to kind of point that out so far, and it just keeps being true. Now, Genius didn't go for the dreaded block on the main ramp. He didn't mm. go for that. He didn't have enough gates to keep that up forever, but he's going for guaranteed damage on the drones. He's killing so many drones. But surely, I mean, from this position, he's already taken a lot of damage, right? The drones are going down, and then there's the immortal follow-up behind it. He's slowing Nurcho down a lot. He's cancelled the Hydralis then. He doesn't have a lot of units. How successful can this immortal all in behind this be? Because look how much damage he's doing. I don't see it not working. He already oh. killed uh, 12 drones, and he's not even done. I thought he's going to pick up the sentries and the stalker, but he's just continuing to fight. He's like, well, you got, you got nothing. You got Why nothing. should I leave? He's got plus one attack. He's killed 14 drones. He's going to get a couple more. He's killed him, Roaches. 17 workers have been killed. And very simply, due to lack of information and scouting in this game, Nurture's just been completely swiped to the side. Yeah, Genius is saying, I'm not much of a clubber, but if you invite <laughs> me to a fun party and I'm having a good time, I'm going to stay for a long time. <laughs> He's having a great time here. And then the follow-up, the after party is where it's really at, Grubby, because the immortal <laughs> attack is coming. And look at it, here it is. Four sentries, uh, three immortals, a bunch of gateways down, plus an armor on the way. And unfortunately for Nurture, he's in, a, he's, in a, he's in so much trouble, but he simply doesn't have a lot of units. He's lost Queen's defending. His economy is stung. And now the War Prism's joining up with his immortals. And as you said, this is looking impossible to hold. Yeah, it looks very hard to uh, stop this after party of immortals who can go on literally forever. Uh, this could be a very long extended attack. There's no real pressure for Genius to attack quickly because there's only 57 drones and not a lot of armies. So he can go now or he can wait a little bit more and grow his army and then go. It will all come down to his force fields and we've already seen they're immaculate. Yeah, and look at this. Good force fields to start him off. Trapping three roaches there, just instantly wiped out of this game. And now this is not the start obviously Nurture wanted, but this is the, the, the dream start here for Genius coming into this series. Looking at going into the winner's match already, a very fast series. Nurture comes in, force fields get planted. These these immortals are not getting touched anytime soon. GG, excellent execution. Game one and game two from Genius. Making Nurcio look like, well, not as good as he usually is. Yeah. Yeah, that's another notch on the helmet there for uh, for Genius. Quite an easy breeze for him. Yeah, that was that was crushing. That was an easy victory, I suppose you could say there. Feels a um, bit like Vortex yesterday. Nur yeah. Genius didn't really get challenged. Every Everything he did, Everything he touched turned to gold. That's one way to describe it. Yeah. He came in with a strict plan on game one and seemed so on game two. Executed it, wins 2-0, have fun in the winner's match. Yeah, and uh, he, he's probably going to have a lot of fun there. Nurcho fell down and... Uh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. And there, wasn't, uh, yeah there wasn't much of a much of a match there. We know Nurcho is capable of much, much better. He's played very reactive. Very good scouting games, and um, this wasn't it. it this really, wasn't Nurture at his best. To me, from looking at how Nurture played this out, having played a lot of Zerg recently, is that I'm really sure he was he blindly pegged his opponent on an early third nexus. He got one evolution chamber and melee upgrades for Zerglings. This is a style that we do know Nurture likes to try to stop third nexus builds. But it, how can you peg somebody on a build like that with no previous information on how he plays? That's for me how it looked like Nurture was playing. Yeah. And then just completely the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hear to see what Genius has to say about it, because he might have done quite some preparation on Nurture, and hopefully through the language barrier regardless, we'll be able to uh, kind of find out what was going on there. Oh, we have a translator. Thank you very much uh, with Genius. Well done. Congratulations. 2-0. And uh, I have to say, very fast 2-0 as well. Grubby, okay. um, he said in his commentary that he felt that the difference between the two players was that you played Nurcio, whereas Nurcio played a Protoss. So my first question to you is, how much study of Nurcio's games have you made? I'll just go on. 
많이 리페 같은 거 많이 보고 했는지 그냥 VOD를 일단 많이 봤고 그리고 팀 리그를 많이 하더라고요 에이서가 그래서 그걸 보고 많이 스타일을 파악해서 이렇게 이, 이, 이길 수 있도록 빌드를 잘 만든 것 같아요. So he watched a lot of uh, VODs uh, of Neutro and Team Acer is playing a lot of team leagues lately. So he watched like all, all his games and so he saw like how he builds and that's why he kind of thought about his strategy and how he builds and that's why he won. Okay. Um, does it help you being teamless right now? Does it mean that you don't have the same pressure as other teams and other players that you know, you've got all these other things to do? Is that easier for you to come into round of 16? 지금 팀 없어서 지금 그, 지금 팀 없어서 아마 게임이 더잘 되는지 그냥 피, 편하게 게임 할수 있는지 긴장 안 되고 그냥 그래서 16강까지 올라오고 그러는지 그건 아니고 그냥 팀을 구하기 위해서 너무 그러니까 예, 열심히 하는 그게 있어 있는 것 같아. It's not that he he's not nervous or anything. It's more that he's like because he's looking for a team, so that's why he want to prove himself and he's trying to do his best. And okay, uh, final question. Um, you are the original BlizzCon winner from StarCraft II in 2010. It's BlizzCon again this year, but you're a long way from being able to qualify right now. You would have to have a very good season here in Europe and then almost go all the way through the bracket at the season finals. Is that something that you think about or is it, is it just not, not possible for you this season? Uh, BlizzCon, first BlizzCon, winner, start to win, winner. 지금... 지금 블리스컨 이번 블리스컨 가게 되면 정말 되게 이번에 4강까지 올라가야 되고 그리고 다음 다음 시즌 파이널도 멀리 되게 멀리 가야 하는데 거기까지 생각하는지 블리스컨 같이 생각하는 자신 있는지 그 생각은 하고 있는데 좀 힘들 것 같긴 한데 그래도 뭐 기적이라는 게 있기 때문에 충분히 생각하고 있어. Obviously he thinks about it and um, He's, he thinks there's a chance, obviously, but it's going to be really, really hard. But he's just going to try to do his best. Okay, uh, actually, I do have one sneaky question. Do you have anything to say to MC now after you've just played really well with your brain? Minchori, son, son, I'm going to say it. Minchori, I didn't say it. When I was in GSL, I was in GSL, and Minchori was 3-0. If I met him, I would like to say 3-0. So, MC, like, kind of... Uh, talked down to him like a few days ago, and but he won against him at the GSI once 3 0. And if they're gonna meet again, he's gonna beat him 3 0 again. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to Genius. He goes through to our upper bracket final to play his fellow Korean 4GG for a place in the quarterfinals of WCS season three. That's it from the second game. Let's get some words of advice from James over at the analysis desk. Oh, I used my real name. I'm so happy about that. Genius wearing his new balance jumper. He's going to have a new bank balance if he keeps playing like that. All right, so there's not a whole lot to talk about in that two games that were very pretty, pretty rapid there from Genius. Uh, but we can take a quick look at game number two here and just kind of go through the thought processes of Nurcio when he's in this game. Obviously, up until this point, as our cast has pointed out, Nurcio hadn't really seen too much uh, going into this, getting his layer on the way. And what's really, really important to point out Aside from not Nurcio not really having too much vision as to what his opponent's doing, is this melee upgrade. Nurcio's entire focus on this game, uh, I, I assume he was anticipating some kind of aggression because of the Roach Warren timing, it being at around 6 minutes 30 going down, as opposed to the much later one in game number one, where he just got completely caught off guard. Now, if we come back to the melee upgrade and the speed, the Overlord down to the bottom left-hand corner of the third base was set up for a long, long time trying to spot this third out. Nurcio is a huge, huge fan of just saying, all right, you've got your third down, melee upgrade's going to heavily favor my Zerglings, going for speed. As soon as that goes down, making a lot, a lot of Zerglings trying to punish that. But in a similar vein to what we saw yesterday, with MC hitting his Terran opponents very, very hard before they could even get the chance to go for an SCV pull or anything like that, Genius says, I'm not going to give you any chance to do any of your plans to me. I am just going to bust you very, very early, very, very hard with some very nice aggression. Uh, and as we scroll on, we can see how well that actually worked out. And 
Unfortunately for Nurcio, Genius had obviously the two-part follow-up from this and was unable to even defeat this uh, very, very nice poke out at the very beginning. So even if this hadn't killed uh, a lot of Nurcio's hopes in the very first push, that second push would have done a hell of a lot more. And as those guys said, those immortals, they can party for a long, long time. So that pretty much does it here. There wasn't el much else to say about this series. And now we can send it over to the lovely Red Eye with some more information here at the WCS. Thank you, uh, Kalaris. There we go, I used his other name as well. And he wasn't at a desk. I don't know why I thought he was at a desk, but I did. Anyway, uh, moving swiftly on before we get ourselves into a lot of trouble, or at least me anyway, uh, WCS Europe's had its first two games here in Group C. We now know that the two Koreans will now fight it out for the winner's spot. But who's going to come back through the lower bracket? We'll also find that out this evening as well. Don't forget tomorrow, Group D as well, with our last two entrants to the round of eight for Season 3. Who's going to be the European champion is, of course, in play tomorrow evening. Uh, also, we've got a Rocket competition going on right now. Facebook.com forward slash Rocket, and you can win yourself one of these mice. Uh, let me just uh, show this off to you. It's a beautiful mouse. I actually love these mouse. If you're watching, Marcus, from Rocket, please send me one. I do like it a lot. Uh, it is, of course, the uh, Rocket Cone Pure. I was getting carried away there. And uh, you can win one of those by going to the Facebook page of Rocket, finding the picture of Demugger. Demugger! Okay, good, still works, that's good, it still works. Uh, find the picture of Demaga, and then click the like button on that picture. That's all you've got to do, there's like thousands of people have already done it, but you can still do it if you haven't already because the competition is still open for you to win that. And best of all about it, not only is it a fabulous mouse, it also has Demaga's little mark on it, signed by himself. Fantastic prize over on the Facebook page of Rocket. We are going to take a quick break now, but don't forget your predictions now are closed. No more predictions because you know the order of the play. We will select a winner at the end of the evening to win the collector's edition, courtesy of our friends at Blizzard. Of course, the Heart of the Swarm collector's edition. Shrink wrap taken off, not the one we've got on the desk for safety reasons. Obviously, I can't have one without the shrink wrap on it. And instead, signed by all of the players from Group C and all of the commentary team. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, it'll be the winner's final of Group C.